Hi, I'm Nick with Spatial Video Insights. And this video is part of a series where I've been evaluating the different ways you can create your own immersive content for the Apple Vision Pro. And I think this is the video I've been the most excited about. The question is, can you create your own 360 or 180 degree VR video for the Apple Vision Pro? Now, of course, the answer to that question is yes, but what I'm most interested in is whether you can do it with equipment that is easy to use and affordable. And I think we finally have a camera that gets us pretty close to that goal. Of course, we're talking about the Insta360 X4. Now, when most people talk about this camera, they use it as an action camera. They shoot in 360 degrees, then reframe to a 16 by nine frame later. Or maybe they adjust the field of view to create cool action shots. But I'm interested in using this to shoot my own 360 degree video. So I can put somebody in a specific location inside of the Apple Vision Pro or some other headset. So to see how this works, we're gonna go kayaking. So I have the Insta360 X4 connected to a selfie stick that's mounted to the deck of the kayak so we can get that perspective. But also on the back of the kayak, I have the older Insta360 X3 and it's connected using this stick which comes with the snow accessory kit. This is going to give us a third person perspective behind the kayak, which will almost look like a drone shot. Okay, let's go paddling. Now, if you don't plan to edit these videos, I think it's a good idea to mount the camera so that the lens that's on the opposite side from the screen is pointed at the subject that you're interested in. And after that, you really don't have to worry about the angle because the built-in horizon lock and flow state stabilization are gonna keep everything locked in. Now, I'll talk a little bit about settings, but there are thousands of other videos on YouTube that talk about settings for this camera. So on the touch screen, swipe down from the top to open the control panel, then tap on the gear button to go into settings, then go to image settings. From here, you should set your video encoding to H.265 and the video sharpness to medium or low. But the most important thing is to set the bitrate setting to high. With this setting, the X4 will record a bitrate of 200 megabits per second. And I have my ISO set to automatic with a limit of 400. Limiting your ISO to 400 means you're not gonna have a lot of luck in low light but it's not good to have your ISO go any higher because then you'll get noise in the image, which does not look great, especially in VR. So with the bitrate and file format locked in, I've set the X4 to record at 8K resolution with 30 frames per second. Now for VR video, we would really prefer a higher frame rate, so that's not ideal. But there's a trade-off here because we're working with a $500 camera that's easy to use. Now I'm also using the remote control for the X4, which you can wear like a watch. That's because I can't reach the camera when I'm kayaking. To control the X3, there is an app on the Apple Watch, but I've been having some connectivity issues with that, so you might wanna test that before you try to use that out in the field. So now I can just go paddling and enjoy the day out here on the water. So how does this all look on the Apple Vision Pro? Well, to be honest, it's okay, but it's really not that great. You know, I tried all of this before with the Insta360 X3 camera, and I just wasn't really impressed. And unfortunately, the X4 just isn't that much better. Of course, 8K is a lot of pixels, and that resolution does make a big difference when you use the X4 as an action camera and you reframe your videos to 16 by nine. But we're doing VR video. 8K video from a half inch sensor that's stretched across a full 360 degree view in the Apple Vision Pro just doesn't look that great. But it is fun, it is affordable, and it is accessible. If you're watching this video on YouTube in VR, you can get an idea of the quality. Just keep in mind there is some loss in quality when you share VR video on YouTube, but that's a topic for another video later. I kind of think of the X4 as the minimum viable product for making your own 360 videos. It works, but it doesn't even come close to the immersive videos published by Apple or some of the higher end content creators on YouTube. I just don't think we're quite at the point where shooting great VR video 
on an affordable camera is as easy as shooting great video on a smartphone. But I think there are some things you can try to get the best possible results. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is that I think the flat color mode works best. I found the colors to be oversaturated and overly contrasty with the natural and the vibrant modes. And if you plan to edit your videos later, the flat mode gives you more control over color correction there as well. The X4 is not going to work great in low light, so you should stick to well-lit scenarios for now. And I also found that the image quality is actually pretty bad when you look at distant objects. Take a look at this shot and you can see that the trees and the buildings in the distance really don't look great. Now, don't try to frame things too close, but if you are shooting people or objects a little more than arm's length away from the lens, I think that tends to work best. Now, the big thing for VR video is that you should not move the camera. Remember, your viewers will be free to move their head in VR and look wherever they want. Moving the camera would force a change in the perspective, and that is terrible in VR. But there are a few small exceptions to that rule. As long as you never turn the camera, gentle movements forward, I think, typically work fine. Also, with something like the kayak, technically the camera is moving, but that's just because the kayak is moving. If your camera is locked to the perspective of a moving vehicle, I think that's fine, because that's the perspective of the person riding in the vehicle. Now, let's talk about getting your videos onto the Apple Vision headset, because this actually takes a little work. The files on the camera saved on the SD card cannot be used directly. To get a usable file, you'll need to download the Insta360 Studio application. It's a free download from the Insta360 website. And after importing your videos from the camera's memory card, in that Studio app, you're going to see lots of tools for reframing. But those are when you're using it as an action camera. We just want the full 360 degree video. So you can just right click on the clip that you want and choose Start Export. Now, before you set the file name, you should change the format to H.265. And for best results, make sure that the bit rate is all the way up at 200 megabits per second. Then set the file name, choose a destination and start the export. If you are editing your videos in something like Adobe Premiere or Final Cut, you could use the file that we just exported or for better performance, you could export your videos as ProRes and then use those for editing, but ProRes files are huge. Now, even better, Insta360 has tools that let you import your video directly into Premiere or Final Cut. Hugh Howe has already published a pretty in-depth video about editing these videos, and you should definitely check that out. But I'll probably still publish my own video on editing later, because there are a few challenges and tricks that I discovered during the process, and I think it's worth adding to the conversation. So keep an eye out for that on this channel. But for now, we can skip the editing. We just want to get these recordings onto the Apple Vision Pro. And in my experience, if you try to send a 360 video file to the Apple Vision Pro using AirDrop, then the transfer will probably fail. So what you can do is compress the video to a zip file first, then send the zip file to the Apple Vision. Then in the Files app on the Apple Vision, you can just tap on the file to unzip it, and now you have that video on your headset. Now, unfortunately, the Apple Vision does not have the software to properly play a 360 degree video. So I recommend you download the app called Moon Player, which is $5 on the App Store. When you open a video in the Moon Player app, you'll need to tap the Format button, then choose VR360. Then you can enjoy your video on the Apple Vision Pro. Now in the Moon Player app, the normal pinch gesture works just fine for the interface. But if you pinch with your thumb and middle finger, then that will show or hide the on-screen controls. So just tap with your middle finger to hide the controls and tap with your middle finger again to show the controls. And this is what I wanted, an immersive 360 degree video that I shot in a unique location. If you want to really see what it looks like out on the water without actually being there, I can send you this video and you can see it in VR. But is all of this worth it? Well, the price is right. For this to be accessible, I think we need a solution that's under $1,000. The Insta360 X4 is $500 in the US. 
and honestly, you'll probably spend another few hundred dollars on accessories. But still, I'm satisfied with the affordability. Then there's the question of the visual quality of this immersive video. And like I said, it's not great. I'm very excited to see other cameras that may be released over the next year. I'm not holding my breath, but it might be worth it to wait six months or so to see what comes next. And finally, is it easy? Well, it definitely is easy to shoot with these 360 action cameras. I would say they're easier than most cameras. Getting those videos to your Apple Vision Pro does take a little extra work, but it's really not too bad. So I'd call that medium to low effort. But if you want to talk about editing your videos, I would flat out say, no, that is not easy. That video I mentioned from Hugh Howe will take you through the whole editing process, but it's certainly not for beginners. If you are eager to start making your own 360 VR videos today, I think the Insta360 X4 is probably your best bet, but the quality still leaves a lot to be desired. If you want something with better quality or an easier post-production workflow, you might want to be patient and keep an eye out for whatever comes next.